Hello class, good evening. How are you doing? Selena, Ana Maria, and Robert. How's everything? Hi, good evening, Mr. Teacher. Hey, good evening. Is everything good? We are doing good right now. Nice, nice to hear that. Yeah. I'm glad. We are happy. We are happy, you know, you know, because of that we are gonna get uh, how do you say Aguinaldo? <laughs> Christmas bonus. You say Christmas oh, bonus. Oh yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get the Christmas bonus the next week in our yes. company. That's why I'm I feel glad. Yeah, I know. I know. It's not enough money, but I'm it's, glad. It's something, yeah. Yeah. It's something and then you can buy some stuff for you and your family. That's good. Yeah, I'm glad, you know, I'm really happy for that. Yeah, the same thing, you know, I'm expecting my my Christmas bonus. <laughs> yeah, like, um, actually, it's paid, I think, this coming week, right? Yeah, it's coming week. Yeah, so I'm glad. Well, um, thank you so much for connecting, guys. Uh, it's Friday, and I, like we say, TGIF, right? And um, today we're going to have, uh, we're going to start. The, the last section which is section number five okay before we do that we're gonna just review some stuff that were pending like yesterday and uh since time really flies let's get started okay so i said yesterday i asked you to um, answer some questions right and these are the questions and i will i would like to start with these answers if you if you don't mind you can um, see if you did your homework and you tell me you know, how you responded to these questions. So any volunteer? Did you investigate how big our country is? Anybody? Did you Google it, Walter? Uh -huh. How big is your country? Uh huh. It's approximately uh, twenty one thousand four point seventy nine square kilometers. Exactly. I know you did it. You did your homework, right? Google says that, right? Twenty one thousand forty one kilo square kilo uh, kilometers, right? Okay, good. So that's El Salvador. And how tall are you? How tall are you? Me. It's around uh, mm -hmm. uh, 170 meters. Okay. So it's, it's 170 meters. Uh -huh. yeah. Did you know that Messi is that, that height? 1.7 1. 1. meters. That's that's Messi's um height. Do, do you know what height is? Sarah's height? No height. <clears throat> what? This one. I, I just sent it on the chat. Height is la estatura. Right. So that is that is estatura. So that is 1.7 meters. That's that's Messi's Messi's height, I think. I remember that once I, I read that somewhere. <laughs> I think it hasn't changed. All right, good. And what about which is the longest river? Which is the longest river? Uh, which is the longest river? Mm -hmm. um, the longest river, the my country is the Lempa River. Uh, how long is it? How long how, is it? How long is it? Mm -hmm. How long is, is the Lempa River? Okay. Did you investigate how long the Lempa River is? Ah, it's uh, about uh, 422 uh, signs uh, is where in Guatemala. Okay. 
since it's a big person. What am I? I see. Yeah, it's four hundred forty-two kilometers long. Okay, good. I think I I can see you did your job, Walter. Thank you so much. Good job. Now let's do something, Walter. You ask somebody else in this group. You ask the same questions to anybody. You choose any person, okay, to see if the information is the same. Only the one about the height is the one that's gonna change. I think. So ask anybody else. Choose one person, anybody. Question the question. Yes, uh, these are the questions. Okay, Walter, can you ask Roberto? Yeah, Robert. Roberto Guzman, you ask a question, please. Usted pregunta ahora, Walter, le pregunta a, a Roberto, las four questions. Robert, uh... How big is your country? Um, and the Salvador have yeah, um twenty twenty two thousand km Okay, how do you say? Kilometers cuadrados. What did we say yesterday? Square kilometers. Exactly. Square kilometers. Okay. Uh, next question, Walter, please. How tall are you? Okay. My height is uh, one dot fifty sixteen three meters. Met metros. Meters, meters, okay, one meter. Meters. Okay. Which one is the longest river of your country? The river, the river more longer in my country is Lempa. Okay. The next question. How, how long is it? Uh, for twenty two kil km kilometers okay. kilometers 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 kilometers, kilometers. like in the the street is in, in the syllable law kilometers 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 uh -huh, kilometers and then when you say kilometers and then you you make sure you add the word long so it is specified that it's talking about the, you know the distance you know, of the measurements of the river in this case well thank you so much walter thank you so much roberto uh how do you say estatura once again in english how long uh, how tall are you how tall, how tall are you? Yeah. And the uh, word estatura, how you how do you say it? The answer would be like my height is seven uh, feet. Okay. It's around seven feet. Seven feet. Seven feet is like what? One point one point seven. No. One point seventy or Peter. something like that. It's up, it's around that. It's uh -huh. around that measure. It's around that measure, I see. Good, good. Christian Rodriguez, how tall are you? I am 1.72 height. Meters, 1.72 meters, yeah. meter. uh-huh. Okay, guys, ask a question with how plus one adjective, whatever you want to ask. Let's follow this pattern, how, plus adjective, and then I think I have a different one second. See, ask a question using uh, how plus one adjective and then the verb to be. Whatever you want to ask, please do it right now. You can ask anybody in this in this group or this class about uh, using this, this uh, structure, okay? So how plus adjective, and then you decide. It can be, you know, a complement. For example, you can say uh, how, and then 
look for an, an adjective that you want to add and then are you or is somebody. So how plus adjective plus we can say verb to be and then plus it can be in like subject or pronouns, okay? So who wants to create a question? Whatever you want to ask. As long as it makes sense, it's okay. Any question? How? The ones we learned yesterday are how deep, how long, how, um, what else? How deep, how long, how high, how far, right? But then you can change the adjective. You can use any other that is not talking about measurements. It's talking about, you know, whatever, something, you know, general, not necessarily about uh, distances. So what comes to your mind? I can make the question if you want. Yeah, please. Okay, but this question is for you. Okay. How far is the school that you are teaching the children? From my home? Yeah. It's near. It's, let's see, I, I'm not sure about how many kilometers, but I just measure it in, in regards of time. Uh, so I can tell you the school where I work is is about twenty five minutes. Like that's, minutes. that's that's the way I see it. But honestly, I have I think maybe twenty twenty kilometers. Not yeah, far. yeah, uh, it's far. around so that. It's around that. Yeah, that's that's where I work. It's not far, honestly. Sometimes I, when I'm like in a rush, because uh, from from home to school, I don't I don't drive. I rather ride motorcycle because it's cheaper. Wow. So, so that's what I do. Let's see. Uh, whenever I take family out, I I drive. But then when I go to work, I ride. You know, I ride motorcycle. Yeah, so you save some money doing I that. I save definitely. Like for example, if I um drive, it's like at least five dollars each each day. But if yeah. I ride motorcycle, ten dollars weekly. You know, yeah, man, that's a that's of, a, a good saving. saving. Yeah, Sa saving right. I there. like to hear that from you. I think you are in that because you, your your job is not so far from you. No, it's not. Honestly, um, thanks for asking. You know, I'm really blessed because I I was I worked in San Salvador for like ninety, like more than I like twelve years. And then, then I moved back to my hometown here in Sonsonate because I, I got the, the plaza here, you know, near. And that was a blessing, you know. Yeah, so for after, sure, that's uh, a blessing from our being, God. Yeah, definitely. After being there in San Salvador for such time, like, and then go, coming back to my hometown, working near, like, it's more money, and, you know, that's I can't tell. I can't describe how, how thankful. Yeah. You see how thankful I am. That's another. Yeah, but that's because. God bless to you, God bless to you, and you were working hard at it. That's what you are doing that. Yeah, yeah, thanks. You know, I can't, listen to this, I can't describe how thankful I, I am. Like, this is another way to express how thankful I am. The same structure. Yeah, yeah you, I, I would like to say how thankful I, you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can say like you can say that. I would say that it's a good um like thankful, faithful, blissful. Blissful is completely different yeah. between those. Yeah, blissful is more like joy, like something. Yeah, blissful. But I'm glad to hear that from you. Yeah, so I'm really. And glad. I would like to to achieve my goal. You, which you. is being fluently in this language. Yeah. Yeah. So. That way, might be I'm gonna get a better job and get better money than I'm earning right now. Yeah, I know you will. Is it? No, es solamente la plática con Roberto. Ya todos están ahí que hizo Luis Roberto está hablando. Come on, guys. You can. Si usted quiere platicar, quiere hablar, do it. Yo creo que el propósito de la interacción es también así. Sí, Roberto es. Yo veo que él es bastante sociable y que he wants to practice. 
aquí todos van a hablar inglés bien bonito, no sé que lo van a lograr. De hecho, aquí hay varios que hablan, yo lo he escuchado. Lo que pasa es que se quedan quiet, se quedan ahí silent, no, no van a talk. Y creo que sí está bien, eh, de repente, you know, express. Cuando solo una idea, ya vamos a ver el tema. Cuando uno se programa, uno declara sus planes y trabaja para ellos, se logran. Cuando uno dice, lo voy a lograr, usted ya ha escuchado eso, ya lleva un porcentaje ganado. Usted está viendo, siempre está bien decirlo, express it. Tenemos un poder inimaginable en nuestras palabras. Entonces tengamos cuidado cuando decimos que no lo voy a lograr, porque también ya llevan un porcentaje que no lo van a lograr. Ok. Así que, yeah, it's not, it's not ignoring anybody, all right? Don't, don't take this wrong. But yeah, si se lucha, se puede, se puede. Yo tengo 34 years old, y yo creo que God has blessed me a lot with many things. But it's because I've been working hard a lot previously. So, um, let's see. I'm really sorry for that. Rafael says he's in poor health. My throat hurts. Okay, sorry. I know, I know. It's not, it's not easy. Uh -huh. Let's continue. Janira, don't be so mean. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, so this is the um, this is the um, last activity about section number four. Now let's go back to the last section of this module. It's enough. The, the last section is talks about. Uh, uh, this is an easy topic, I believe, and that. Uh, but I want you to practice and also ask questions if there is any. Let's talk about future. This is interesting because when I was studying English, I remember my teacher used to tell me, let's talk about future. And the first thing that came to my mind was going to and will. But then in English, it's not like that. As a matter of fact, some, some, some people, some experts, some linguists, they say that there's no future tense in English because we can speak you know, about future plans or about something in the future with different structures, not necessarily will and going to. And I want to leave some time to talk about some of the most common ways to speak, to talk about future plans. Okay, so today we're gonna focus in one um, topic, which is how to use present continuous to talk about future and also be going to. So let's talk about it. Let's see, I'm gonna need uh, the help of somebody. I'm going to ask in this case, let's see, Janira Isabel, so read the, the lesson objective, please. By the end of this class, you will be uh, able. Así es, be able. Be able, huh? It's good. be able. able. Be able to talk about different city, cities and international time zones. Additionally, you will practice a conversation between two people in different time zones. Okay, well, you have the description and, and translation right below, so in case you have some questions, right? So the grammar point is about, um, you will be able to talk about, you know, cities and international time zone and you will also practice about time zones. But the grammar point is, like I said, something uh, structured to talk about the future. But let's start with this conversation. What time is it there? This is the one. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Give me a second, please. Hold on. Let me share the screen, the correct one thing. Just a second, I'm going to share that. Okay, let me let Hold on, hold on, please. Okay, let me just blow it. So if you see section number five says, I'm going to, I'm going to a soccer match. That's what it says, right? But then making plans conversation. This is the one I think I was, I don't know what, I was explaining something different, I believe something was wrong, but it's okay. So let me display the, the, the correct one. Here we go. Talk about 
teacher things. This is the one. Listen up and then we'll talk about it. Second, that I think it's not working properly. I don't hear it. Hold on. You may listen to the conversation as many times as you need to. Hi, ready to start? This time we'll study future tense. Please pay attention to the conversation we're about to play. As you listen to it, try to identify the two ways to express a future plan. Remember, you may listen to the conversation as many times as you need to. Making plans. Part A. Listen and practice. Say, Miguel, what are you doing tonight? Do you want to go bowling? I'd love to, but I can't. I'm going to a soccer match with my brother. Oh, well, maybe some other time. Are you doing anything tomorrow? We could go then. Tomorrow sounds fine. I'm going to work until 5. So let's go around six. Okay. Afterward, maybe we can get some dinner. S sounds great. Right, let's do something, class. Um, in this conversation, we have uh, two ways to talk about future. What are they doing? They're making plans, right? So tell me what are those sentences here in this conversation where they are talking about plants, so structures. What are two structures that are uh, where they express future plants? Read us the conversation again. And tell me what are the ones where they are talking about future reference, with future reference. What was the question, teacher? Excuse me. Yeah, the question is that you read the conversation and then tell me what are this, the questions or sentences in this conversation that are uh, referring to future tense. Oh, cool. What are you doing tonight? Thank you so much. That's the first one. What are you doing tonight? Yes. Let me uh, underline this one. What are you doing tonight? Well, what are you doing tonight is future reference, right? What what other do you do you see here? I don't anything tomorrow. Okay, good. Are you doing anything tomorrow? Good. Are you doing anything tomorrow? This is another question. There's, there, there are more. After this, I think I'm going to a soccer match. I'm going to. Good. I'm going to a soccer match. This is future reference to. Nice. And then there are there is another one. I'm going to work on the point. Awesome. I'm going to work until fine. So, guys, we have, I know you have studied this tense before, and then uh, we have future reference. This conversation is providing us with two, two options. Be going to, be going to, and is talking, be going to, and present continuous. But present continuous has different usages, right? But this one is talk about it's talking about future. So now, does anybody or in this class know what's different between be going to and present continuous when talking about future plans? Is there any difference, or are they both the same? What do you think? There are uh, there are difference between both because for be going to is 
talking about specifically a plan that someone wants to do in the future, but in the present continues if an action that someone is doing in the present, right? Like for example, right now. Okay, so in the case Roberto what that, that says, let's see, what are you doing tonight? What do you understand? How how would you translate that sentence? What are you doing tonight? En español, si se lo traduzco literal, ¿qué estás haciendo esta noche? Uh, so, si se lo traduzco literalmente. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pero en otras palabras, como el gringo lo puede decir, might be, eh, ¿qué harás esta noche? ¿Qué, qué, qué, qué vas a hacer? ¿Qué vas uh -huh. a hacer esta noche? Nice. So that's the point. Entonces, aquí entendemos clase de que el present continuous tiene, como lo dijo Roberto, eh, tiene dos, dos. De hecho, tiene más usos. Pero en realidad, el que él dijo fue, el present continuous está en progreso en el momento que está hablando. Pero el uso que le vamos a dar en esta sesión va a ser futuro. ¿Cómo lo voy a determinar yo que sea el futuro? El contexto, las palabras utilizadas me van a ayudar. La primer clave es la oración, la pregunta que tenemos en la conversación. What are you doing tonight? ¿Por qué sé que es future? La palabra tonight me está automáticamente conectando a un, a una, a un plan previamente arreglado hacia un futuro cercano. What are you doing tonight? Si no dijera tonight, si digo, what are you doing? Ahí cambia todo eso. Hey, what are you doing? I'm just teaching, I'm just listening. Pero si, what are you doing tonight? Ahí cambia. Ya la palabra tonight, así como puede haber en el caso del, are you doing anything tomorrow? Esa otra vez tomorrow ya me da la pauta de que mi oración no es, ¿Qué estás haciendo? ¿Estás haciendo algo mañana? Sería, ¿qué vas a hacer mañana? En otras palabras, yo tengo la facultad de usar el, el presente continuo para hablar sobre el futuro y agregar este, una expresión de tiempo para ser más puntual, si no se ha mencionado previamente la referencia que es al futuro. Si yo digo, I'm playing, I'm playing soccer this weekend, no, no digo estoy jugando pelota este fin de semana. Sería, voy a jugar pelota este fin de semana. ¿Por qué? Porque this week que me da la referencia. Si yo, si le pregunto, por ejemplo, este, vaya, Yuri le vamos a preguntar. ¿Cómo me responde Yuri? Are you doing anything special this weekend? Nothing. Nothing, nothing special. Si digamos que algo... I cannot say special. Are, what are, what, are you doing anything this weekend? Um, sería going, going to the class in swimming. I'm going to the swimming class. Uh -huh. Está bien, I'm going to swimming classes. Aunque se podría decir también, I'm taking swimming classes. Sí, usando el presente continuo okay. y me, me responde siempre y tendría sentido porque mi pregunta fue en futuro. Usted también podría decir um, en esa misma línea, usando el presente, presente continuo. ¿Qué aprendemos de esta sesión? Aprendemos que el present continuous hace referencia al futuro cuando tenemos un parámetro de referente que nos ayuda a aclarar el contexto. Sí, si ya se mencionó previamente, yo puedo decirlo. Diego, le voy a preguntar algo. Diego, le doy la palabra. Si le pregunto a Diego, eh, este, digamos de que tengo un plan yo con mi familia el, el jueves y vamos a ir a la playa. Y le digo, um, are, you, are you working on Thursday, Diego? Are you working on Thursday? Next Thursday? Are you working on Thursday? Y digamos That's que right. ahora... ¿verdad? Digamos, Diego, vamos a hacerlo más real, Diego. Vamos a empezar este fin de semana. Yo le pregunto a Diego, ¿Are you working on Sunday? No, I don't work in... Entonces me dice usted, no, I am not. ¿Verdad? Porque es presente confirmado. Pero porque dije, ¿Are you working on Sunday? Estoy preguntando este próximo, ¿verdad? No el anterior. Por lógica, porque hoy es Friday. Entonces yo le digo, ok, my family and I are going to the beach. Would you like to come around? 
Pero mi pregunta de referencia fue, are you working on Sunday? Cuando yo utilizo el presente continuo, y eso va para todo, para hablar en futuro, se puede, pero es más bien para situaciones previamente arregladas o planificadas. Sí, porque eso va a pasar. Eso va a pasar, ya se planificó. A diferencia de los otros tiempos que tienen cierto grado de probabilidad. O también el momento que se está diciendo. Diego, iba a preguntar algo. Yes, um, I try to, to say it in English. Let's go ahead. Um, and the question you said uh, going to, and uh, it's valid to, to answer, um, for example, in your question, uh, are you going to family in the weekend? Um, it's valid. I say I'm going to, I'm going to go with my father. Yes, yeah. Let me explain that. Eh, me gustaría hacerlo, lo voy a hacer en inglés, luego, si no, que aclara, me dice si, porque lo digo en español. Let me provide you with some ideas, because I understand your question. First, when we speak in Spanish, like, simple, simple, simple um, answer. Okay, Diego, what's your name? You can say to me, Diego. But then the problem is that we are used to, or we always are told that we have to respond with the same structure. So when I say to you, what's your name? You're waiting, you're waiting an answer like, my name is Diego. But then what happens if you don't say my name is? Nothing, because I say, what's your name, Diego? You respond. The same thing happened in this question. It's not required to, to respond in the same structure. So if I ask you, hey, Diego, are you coming, are you coming home on Saturday? You can say to me, yeah, I'll go. I'll go this Saturday. You know, you can respond me that way, but um, it's, it's like, it's not mandatory to respond with the same structure because in real life, that's, that's how we speak. You don't speak, you don't stick to a structure given. Like in Espanol. ¿Va a venir el, va, va a venir el fin de semana a mi casa? Sí, iré. Dos tiempos acabo de usar. Like, I'm, are you going to come? Yes, I'll go. Usamos going to, usamos will para responder. Entonces, no es mandatorio que se académicamente hablando si se espera que nos apeguemos al, a la structure. Y les digo, un, una vez en una clase, yo recuerdo de que este Pachi le pregunto, eh, would, you like, would you like some soda? Usted no me va a responder, yes, I would, ¿verdad? Lo, usted puede responder, sure, sure, go ahead, or thank you, or uh, thanks for alguna frase que diga, yeah, yeah. Usted me responde sin decirme, yes, I would. O sea, no esperemos la respuesta siempre de, de la, con la misma estructura, porque la vida real no es así. Pero en un examen sí hay que pegarnos. Si es académico, digamos, el examen es standardized test y de, de, usemos el que nos está preguntando, si no, la vamos a regar. ¿Sí? Yo quiero que quede esa, esa, esa idea clara para que no va después ponerle otra y era algo en tu y se le puso con el will y la van a poner mal. Pero real life, así siendo honesto, speaking like real, real English, no se apega siempre a la misma estructura. You can answer spontaneously. So that's my point. Okay? I don't know if that clarifies your question, Diego. Yes, I got it. All right, good. We, so, we search uh, the more easily to moment to, to speak. So, so, uh, and you know what happened? Most of the time when we are speaking, because for instant decision, we tend to use will. It's always. Will is for instant decision. Like I see that somebody is like walking and holding, you know, something. Then I can, hey, I help you. You don't, you don't say I'm gonna help you. It says I'll help you or like te ayudaré at the moment of speaking. So you you rather use will. So that will depend maybe on the context you wanna use the structure. But of course there there is a there is an explanation about it. I want to provide some other ideas about this topic. Just give me a second. As of now, what have you understood? Uh, is it clear about uh, the future tense or how do we use it? Or can you create one sentence with present continuous and one sentence with um, going to? 
just whatever you want to talk about. Open your microphone, or, or if you know how to use the tense, you can ask me a question in the future. What comes to your mind? Any question? Whatever you want to ask. Um, and the, what is the question? Yeah, the question is to create one future uh, question, whatever you want to ask. It's just want to make sure you understand how to make questions in future, either with, with going to or pressing continuous. Okay, I'm going to study the whole weekend at home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start. Y fíjese que allí lo que acaba de decir Robert sale una, una, una manera un poquito informal, que él lo acaba de decir y así se habla. Se habla. Voy a dejar de compartir eso para, espero no confundir, pero siempre explico esta parte cuando usamos el going to. Yo creo que Robert ya se imagina, porque él dijo gonna, ¿verdad? Gonna. Y gonna es una forma informal de going to. O sea, que gonna es going to. Él dijo, I'm gonna. Dijo así, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna study. O sea, que I'm gonna study y bla, bla, bla. Sería como I am going to study. I am going to study. It's the same thing. Y Quiero, este, aquí sí podemos usar, miren, la verdad que hablar de going to, este, se escucha bastantes cosas informales, y voy a mencionar una bien informal, que es el uso del ain't. Ustedes saben que ain't, esto es igual a decir el verbo be, que es is, am, um, are, en sus tres, en, en sus tres opciones, pero es en forma negativa, ¿sí? O sea, como decir cualquiera de esas, como decir, is not, am not, y are not. Eso es ain't, prácticamente, es lo más común. Hay gente que lo usa hasta para otros tiempos, en realidad, porque ain't es tan informal, pero el más común es el be. Ese ain't significa isn't, am not, y aren't. ¿Por qué explico eso? Porque yo de repente puedo escuchar una, una oración que diga, esto. Bien. Esto sigue informal. Mire, ¿qué estoy diciendo ahí? I ain't gonna play. No voy, a, no voy a jugar por soccer. Uh -huh. I ain't. O sea, I ain't gonna play. Y hay otra más informal. Aquí usted puede de, de repente tomar esto para decir yo no voy a. Se casa con la idea de que I ain't gonna y le pone cualquier acción. I ain't gonna do it. No lo voy a hacer. I ain't going to. I ain't going to. Yeah, I ain't gonna go with you. No iré contigo. I ain't gonna. Porque ya sabemos que el ente es toda esa parte negativa. Lo van a escuchar de repente. Pero hay una más informal que siempre, siempre es con el mismo sujeto, ¿verdad? En caso. ¿Quién ha escuchado de esto? ¿Quién ha escuchado de eso? ¿Han visto esa, esa ama en algún momento ustedes? ¿Sí lo han visto? ¿No lo han visto? Creo que solo Roberto lo ha visto. Entonces, ama significa I am going to eso significa ama. I am going to. O sea que miren, en el teléfono yo me acuerdo de que siempre escuchaba a los gringos decir I'm going to do it. What? I'm going to do it. No worries, I'm going to do it. Yo, I'm going to do it. Yes, I'm going to do it. Y yo le decía, all right, I'm going to help you. Le decía yo, I'm going to help you. Porque si hablan, ama, ama es, I'm going to. I'm going to go with you tomorrow, okay? No, no worries. Or, I'm, I'm going to pay tomorrow. Así dicen. Entonces, este es súper informal, pero sí existe. Ama es, I am going to. Sí, para quien quiere hablar informal, uh, ya ahí están esas alternativas usando esa estructura del, del futuro. ¿Ok? Entonces, uh, yo puedo decir, I'm going to write it down. I'm going to write it down. 
I'm going to write it down. I am going to write it down. I'm going to learn it. Voy a aprender. Voy a aprender. I'm going to learn it. I ain't going to learn it. No lo voy a aprender. So, ese es informo y me, me, me debí un poquito en este tema porque Robert dijo gonna y creo que está bien saber que gonna es going to. Una vez más, this is informal English. It's not formal English. ¿Ok? Es, ahí queda. Pueden tomarle una screenshot si quieren y, y si expandir un poco más en el tema, si you would like to. But then, that's how it is. No sé si queda alguna idea de la, de la, de la idea planteada, de la redundancia. No sé, se siente un poco confuso. Quiero cerrar este paréntesis diciendo lo siguiente. Esto está bien que lo sepan para que lo entiendan, pero si no, no lo usan, está mucho mejor. Como, como está bien que sepan las malas palabras en inglés, no para que las digan, sino para que las editen y las entiendan cuando les están dando una semejante a saben qué. Bueno, si yo les contara las palabras que me han dicho en el teléfono, a mí le, le, le diera risa. Yo, en serio, sí se dice. Yo, ¿eh? así como que se dice, así se dice. Y yo como que me quedaba. Y porque hay en inglés, así, en inglés, este, bien vulgar, bien ofensivo. Que a veces no se dice así en clases como esta, no se discuten. Pero la, lo aprendemos de repente, de alguna otra manera. Y este, al principio a mí no me, no me, me decían los clientes y yo, ay, Después ya empecé a internalizar otra cosa. Vaya, me decían esas palabras y como... Pero tenía que hold it, ¿verdad? Aguantarse porque por eso me pagaban. Yo trabajé 10 años casi en call center y eso. Pues eso de ahí pues, hice muchas cosas. Es una experiencia nada más que compartir acerca del informal English, ¿ok? Pero si existe, hay que conocerlo, ¿all right? Now let's go back to the topic. Y quiero hablar de eso. Tengo como 15 minutes, 17 approximately. There is no future tense in English. Entonces, ¿cómo se expresa? How do we express it? Y aquí hay una manera de cómo hacerlo. Por eso me gusta esta presentación, porque dice, no hay manera, no hay puros en inglés, pero hay manera de expresarlo. Así como este, el verbo, el verbo en, en futuro no existe. No existe, porque miren cómo aprendemos los verbos que aprendemos. It, decimos presente. Eight, pasado. It's in pasado participio. Entonces no hay verbo en, en futuro. No hay. Solo hay una estructura de cómo hablarlo en futuro usando el verbo en presente. ¿Make sense? Por eso ahí viene la idea de que no future tense. Si no, pues al verbo diría, como en español, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo comí? Uh, comeré ya futuro, ¿verdad? Pero en inglés no. It's in es pues, past participio. All right, let's study some of them. Voy a ir un poquito rápido, pero si me detienen no habría ningún problema. First one is will. Will is to talk about future, right? This is the formula. I need somebody to help me. Let's see, I'm going to request Walter. Can you read the, the three options here? Plus, minus, and, and question mark. Affirmative, negative, and question. I will probably travel to London next year. Continue, please. I will not uh, want travel to London next year. Uh, will you travel to London uh, next year? Thank you so much. So these are the three most common. We're just missing the WH one. But then uh, if you understand, if you have studied the use of will, the negative form is want. So this is the easiest way to speak about the future. So I know you understand it. Well, when it comes to talk about the uh, use of the subjects, we, we use a subject like I, you, he, she, it, we, they, with will, right? It doesn't change. And sometimes people use it like in, in, in a contracted form, I'll, you'll, she'll, will, and they'll, they'll, they'll go to blah, blah, blah. That will depend, right? But then um, this is the first option to speak about future tense. Do you know how to use will? Can you send me one message on the chat in giving me a sentence with will or negative form? Or open your microphone and tell me one sentence. Uh, Janira. Yo tengo una pregunta sobre las contracciones en el recuadro pequeño. ¿Por qué todas las contracciones están de la misma manera si está hablando 
como más de diferente, o sea, como que se refiere a diferente, ¿no? En unos habla de primera persona, en otros de plural y en otros eh, de tú, ¿no? Uh -huh. ¿Por qué se contracta de la misma manera? Es mi pregunta. Vaya, lo que estamos contracting es el, el, es el auxiliar will. Es el mismo. Es como el will se usa para todos, la manera de, contract, de hacer la contraction de will es la misma para todos. No va a cambiar. Es decir, si yo digo... I'll, I'll go, I'll go tomorrow. Siempre es I'll. Si va por she'll, siempre es she'll. Siempre, o sea, lo que estoy contracting ahí va a ser siempre este I'll, she'll, she'll play soccer, whatever. So basically lo que estamos contracting es will. Y la contraction de will es, es apostrophe L, L. Así. Por eso que siempre va a ser la misma. Es como, mire, es como cuando decimos el uso del did. El did se usa para todos los subjects. En cambio, en presente es tú y das. Ahí hacemos una diferencia. Tú va para uno y das para el otro. Pero el did va para todos. Así aplica el will para futuro. El will va para todos. Y por lo consiguiente, si es la misma palabra will, la forma de hacerla corta es haciendo el apóstrofe y doble L. No hay cambio. Ahora, si ya, ya sea negativo, miren, es want. Y eso ya cambia once. Pero once se aplica otra vez para todos los artículos. No hay ninguna diferencia. Ok. Nice. Vaya. En will es la primera. Tienen otra pregunta de about will. La primera manera. Sí, la, creo que ustedes ya saben eso, pero el will por lo general el verbo suena como hará, haré, irá. Así termina. But, uh, I will probably travel. Yo probablemente viajaré. I'll probably eat. Comeré. Esa es el, la finalización más común de will. Y luego, what is the other one? What is the other one? Vamos la otra. La otra forma es be going to, la que estamos hablando ahorita. Be going to. Esa es la que ya, de algún cierto modo, se han estudiado. Esa es la otra. Yo lo que recomiendo aquí es de que ustedes creen sus oraciones cambiando valores. I'm going to play. I'm not going to play. Are you going to play? Hacemos una inversión. Y lo mismo otra vez. Este cuadrito, miren. I'm going to. El verbo. You are going to. Uh, he or she is going to. We are going to. Y ahí va. Ese es como voy a. Tú vas a. Nosotros vamos a. Ese es future. Future. Si ¿Sí? alguien quiere crear una oración con going to. No, no, no opinions about going to. Está muy fácil o está muy confuso. Esa es otra manera de ver el futuro. Nosotros vamos a aprender inglés. O nosotros vamos a hablar inglés fluido. We are going to speak fluently. We are going to speak English fluently. We're going to speak French fluently. Okay? Esa es la manera. Y aquí está el que estamos hablando. Miren. Present continuous. Future. Future. Mary is traveling from Paris to London in half an hour. Okay? Hace referencia al futuro. Mary isn't traveling from Paris to London in half an hour. Is Mary traveling from Paris to London in half an hour? Make sense? This is future text. Future. ¿Por qué sé que future? Por el contexto me está diciendo no, no que ya está viajando. Dice que en, en, en hora y media. Half an hour es media hora, de hecho. Y es que va a salir. Que va a viajar. ¿Tienen alguna oración que quieran compartir? Si voy rápido, quiero que ustedes me digan ahorita, el cuadrito aquí está, miren, las opciones. Quiero que me, me digan, I don't get it, dime un example, o cómo se va a tener el, el present continuous para future reference. I give an example, teacher. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, please. I will go in on holiday the last week of December. Yes. Nice. Eso se usa en the wheel. I will go... I will go on holidays, you know, uh, last weeks of December, because we're talking about this month. Yes, todavía no estamos en esa semana, makes sense, future. 
Okay. Siento en toda la libertad de hablar con el present continuous también. Y aquí está una que me gusta bastante porque presente simple también se usa para hablar en el futuro. A ver, antes de que muestre el ejemplo, ¿quién me da un presente simple para, con sentido al futuro? ¿Qué oración podemos decir que sea, que signifique al futuro? I got one easy for you. Mm -hmm. But that is only used for, like, for, for, like, when you are gonna wait for someone that is traveling by train, by airplane, mm -hmm. or by bus. You can okay. say, or I can say, my, sis my sister arrived in two hours. Or mm -hmm. the, the airplane arrives on in tomorrow, might be. Nice. Robert, you, uh, you you saw my presentation, you know. You know, yeah, present simple to talk about future talks about schedule activities or schedules. Por eso es presente simple, como lo acabas de decir. Puede ser para un horario, para, en el caso, como una hora, ¿verdad? Por eso es que es present simple y sí se puede para future tense. Exactamente. De hecho, es el uso más común que se tiene el simple present. All right, take a look at this one. Miren lo que acaba de decir el, este, Robert, the train leaves London at 10. The train doesn't leave London at 10. Does the train leave London at 10? Y usted está preguntando, ¿qué es como la, las 9 de la mañana? Y la pregunta es eso, haciendo referencia a future. ¿Sale el tema a las 10? Se ha ido a toda vida, ¿verdad? Es future reference. ¿Sí? Ese es uno de los usos. Si quiero finalizar la clase, este, voy a adelantar todo esto. El, aquí explico un poquito sobre el, el will y el going to eso es importante guys if you want to write it down do it when a screenshot do it um, usamos will but uh, it's based on what we think or imagine ¿Miren? usamos going to based on evidence you see the difference look at this one I think you'll be a great computer operator one day me imagino, ¿verdad? Me imagino. Yo pienso, es mi opinión. Pero si veo que es, está, está ahí, el, se pone más oscuro, ¿va? hay evidencia que algo va a pasar, no voy a decir, I think it's going, I think uh, it will rain. Decimos, I think it's going to rain. Porque yo veo la evidencia. Evidence is, is given, is, is there. So if you see the evidence, then you want to say going to. You don't want to say will. Diego. Uh, between will and going to, uh, the difference is the, the evidence. Uh, because the, the example, the, the, the rain, if done any, what do you say, nube? A cloud, I said cloud. A cloud, yeah, cloud, cloud in, in the heaven. I don't, I use will because it's my prediction to to rain in, in the night. Um, so, yeah, so I don't any, any clouds. Yeah, yeah, you're right, exactly. If you don't see any evidence uh, talking about the rain, then you wanna say, I think it's, I think it will rain, but then you're, you're not sure. You just so so like supposing that that's going to happen, but then you don't have evidence. So this doesn't only apply for rain or you know, rain. It also applies for other circumstances where you have evidence and where you don't have to. Okay, this is just the example, but yes, you got it. So this is one. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit faster because I want to give you the whole picture of this. What about uh? This other use will may or not happen in the future because we are not sure. You see, and you use the verse I think, expect, believe, it, or hope with the expressions uh, be sure or be afraid. Look at the example. This is will. She works hard. She will probably be promoted one day. So you are not sure. You like. Ah. You are not fully convinced of something. Will. Will. Okay. And then uh, since the class is being recorded, I'm going to go a little bit fast. So you study this and maybe with that, you can screenshot the ideas and then you can uh, review the, 
the grammar focus, and then we can retake on Monday to reinforce the, this idea. I want to finish it, okay? I only have four minutes. Look at this one, decisions. This is cool, I like this one, decisions and actions. Actions we are not sure about or haven't decided to do yet. Well, we will probably travel around the world one day. We have, we're not sure, we haven't decided about this yet. But with going to actions, we are sure about, we have already decided to do in the near future. <clears throat> That's going to. There's a difference, guys. I know it's a lot of theory, but then but still, you know, the more we practice, the, the easier it will, it will, it'll be for us to, to know what to use. Uh, they are going to get married in three months. You already made a decision. So if you already made the decision, you're going to say, I'm going to do this tomorrow. You already made the decision. Pero si no tomó la decisión todavía, está inseguro, dice, will, mejor, no usamos going to. Y vean la otra, esa me gusta. Estas son las que les decía, decisiones que tomamos en el momento. Ah, cuando está hablando, don't worry, we will help you. I don't, I don't know how to use a camera. Yo te voy a ayudar. En el momento, toma la decisión, dice, well, no usa going to. Ok, ve que alguien se va cayendo ahí, o de repente le va a ayudar, dice, I'll help you. O si no... Usa will, pero no going to. Para on the spot decision, usamos will. Esa teoría es de re, re, revisarla un par de veces más, pero solo quiero dar la foto completa para que se alguien lo va, tiene tiempo de revisar. Y esto es el going to para intentions, visions, and plans. Miren, ahí tenemos otra vez el going to. No usamos will. Cosas in the near future. Uh -huh. Sí, ese es uno más. Y quiero llegar a la, a la parte del, del, del tema. Eso, ahí otros usos. Son usos que aparecen, mire, pero quiero ver el, el de promesas. O sea, muy bueno, ¿verdad? O sea, muy súper una promesa. Yo te voy a amar todo el día. Dígale, I will love you. Pero no le va a decir, I'm going to love you, porque es una promise. Te voy a preguntar algo, Jaime. Si podría mandar esa presentación para que podamos repasarla nosotros. Sí, se la voy a mandar. Para. De hecho, esta sí, presentación por siempre me ha gustado porque es la que resume las ideas que yo siempre quiero compartir de esos temas. La voy a mandar. Y mire, aquí está el, que, el, el tema de ahora. Por aquellos que aún tienen como son, están dudando cómo usamos el, el, el present continuum. Es para fix arrangement. Esa es la clave. Fix arrangement. Son arreglos previamente a, a hechos o ya establecidos, ¿sí? Porque fíjense que la probabilidad de que eso suceda es, es grande, es, eso es como que eso va a pasar uh, en un futuro cercano. Ya, ya decidimos y ya planeamos. Entonces uso present continuous. ¿Sí? Eso sí es, este, en probabilidades, el, ese es el, más, el mayor, ¿verdad? Y aquí aparece un ejemplo. Sorry. I'm playing, I'm playing tennis on Monday. I'm not doing anything on Tuesday. Ya está decidido, ya lo, ya lo tengo definido en mi agenda. ¿Sí? Y un último, que era lo que decíamos hace un rato con Robert, que era el uso del presente. Pero mire, ¿para qué se usa? Para el futuro, eso es importante. Timetables. Timetables son horarios. Son horarios. Ahí usamos present simple para hablar en el futuro. Para timetables, para qué más? Para programs, algún programa establecido o schedules, que yo he mencionado, horarios, schedules. Ahí usamos el present simple para hablar del futuro. Este, un ejemplo, my train leaves in, in 15 minutes. Este, ese es un resumen, así a grosso modo, ya se mete en el tiempo. Este, le voy a poner esto, algunas expresiones, y esto es importante, aquí termino la clase. Ese es el cuadrito que resume todo. Miren, predictions, usamos estos. Para planes e intentions, usamos esto. Para timetables, usamos el, el present simple. Y los arrangements, usamos el present continuous. Class, yo retomaré esto el lunes porque se me acabó el tiempo. Y este, les voy a mandar la presentación para que la estudien y hagan sus propios ejemplos. ¿Ok? Pasen un feliz fin de semana. Have a nice weekend. Study. And then I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.
See you Monday. See you Monday. Blessing.